Hello, good morning. My name is Reverend Jenny. This is morning prayer on Monday, the 20th of November. Today in our church's calendar, we are remembering two people, Edmund Marta, King of the East Angles, and also Priscilla Lydia Sellen, a restorer of the religious life in the Church of England. Here's something about Priscilla. Priscilla Lydia Sellen was born probably in 1821. Although never enjoying good health, she responded to an appeal from the Bishop of Exeter in 1848 for workers amongst the destitute in Plymouth. The group of women she gathered around her adopted a conventional lifestyle and in the face of much opposite opposition she created the Sisters of Mercy. Her crucial role in the revival of religious life in the Church of England was enhanced when in 1856 her sisters joined with the first community founded, the Holy Cross Sisters, thus establishing the Society of the Holy Trinity. She led her community in starting schools and orphanages. In addition to sisters nursing the sick in slum districts and soldiers in the Crimea. In her last years, she was an invalid, dying in her mid fifties on this day in 1876. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth be moved, and though the mountains tremble in the heart of the sea. Though the waters rage and swell, and though the mountains quake at towering seas, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the dwelling of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Therefore she will not be removed, God shall help her at the break of day. The nations are in uproar and the kingdoms are shaken, but God utters his voice and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and behold the works of the Lord, what destruction he has wrought upon the earth. He makes wars to cease in all the world, he shatters the bow and snaps the spear and burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. God of Jacob, when the earth shakes and the nations are in uproar, speak and let the storm be still. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is Isaiah chapter 9, beginning at verse 8. The Lord sent word against Jacob, and it fell on Israel, and all the people knew it. Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria. But in pride and arrogance of heart they said, The bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. 
So the Lord raised adversaries against them and stirred up their enemies, the Arameans in the east and the Philistines in the west, and they devoured Israel with open mouth. But all this his anger has not turned away, his hand is still stretched out. The people did not turn to him who struck them, or seek the Lord of hosts. So the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed in one day. Elders and dignitaries are the head, and prophets who teach lies are the tail. For those who led his people led them astray, and those who were led by them were left in confusion. That is why the Lord did not have pity on their young people or compassion on their orphans and widows. For everyone was godless and an evildoer, and every mouth spoke folly. For all this his anger has not turned away, his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burned like a fire, consuming briars and thorns. It kindled the thickets of the forest, and they swelled upwards in a column of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the land was burned, and the people became like fuel for the fire. No one spared another. They gorged on the right, but still were hungry. They devoured on the left, but were not satisfied. They devoured the flesh of their own kindred. Manasseh devoured Ephraim, and Ephraim Manasseh, and together they were against Judah. For all this, his anger has not turned away. His hand is stretched out still. Are you who make iniquitous decrees, who write oppressive statutes, who turn aside the needy from justice, and to rob the poor of my people of their right, that widows may be your spoil, and that you may make the orphans your prey? What will you do on the day of punishment, in the calamity that will come from far away? To whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave your wealth, so as not to couch among the prisoners or fall among the slain? For all this his anger has not turned away, his hand is stretched out still. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord your Holy One, the Creator of Israel your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a sea in the way, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing, nor consider the things of old. Now it springs forth, do not you perceive it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The New Testament reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning at, first, at the first verse. Jesus said to the crowds, Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give, you will, it will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbour's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbour, Let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye, you hypocrite? First take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbour's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs. Do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, you will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets.
I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins in the tender compassion of our, do of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we give thanks for this day. We give thanks for the worship that took place across our benefice and here in the city of Canterbury. We give thanks especially for the visit of Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury to St Dunstan's yesterday. We pray for him as he continues to reflect and process all that has taken place in General Synod. We pray for healing for him and for all who have been hurt by the deliberations that have been taking place in the past week. And we give thanks for those who were made honorary canons and lay canons in Canterbury Cathedral yesterday. We pray too for those who were not able to make it, including Reverend Joe. We give thanks for the life and ministry of this city and for those who have been recognised, for their continued links with the cathedral and for their mission, proclaiming and living out the kingdom of God in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those known to us who have asked for our prayers, those who are struggling in body, mind or spirit. Give them comfort and help in their troubles. Bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world. We pray especially for Gaza, Ukraine and other places on our hearts where there is political turmoil, war and violence. We pray for those innocent people seeking to live, seeking health, food, supplies, safety. And we pray for all peacekeeping efforts, for aid, for diplomacy. Lord, may the nations of this earth learn to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. For all those who have died, all those we love but see no longer, 
Most eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Eternal God, whose servants Edmund and Priscilla kept faith to the end, both with you and your people, grant us such steadfast love of faith that with the noble army of martyrs we may come to enjoy the fullness of the resurrection of life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of, of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for joining me and have a good day ahead. Bye-bye.